Uh, he acts as uh, secretary for the zoning commission. And uh, we have Dana Thomas, uh, one of our other zoning commissioners uh, is joined us uh, online. So Matt and, and Dana are online. Uh, since this is an official meeting of the zoning commission, we have to first officially begin our meeting and then we'll open it for public comment. I also want to advise you that this meeting is being broadcast via Zoom for people to watch and listen, and it is being recorded so people can uh, listen to it at a later time. Uh, we do have a quorum for the Zoning Commission uh, with the meeting agenda for tonight and the minutes of the prior meeting having been provided earlier. Is there any discussion or correction to them? Hearing none without objection, they are approved. Uh, everyone seated here in the room should have picked up and um, uh, hopefully read the, uh, let me move this out of the way here, uh, uh, some uh, document that is uh, out front in the hallway. Uh, for those people that are on Zoom, I have shared my screen. I've got the same document uh, up online. Uh, that describes the direction that the Zoning Commission is considering with regard to applying the current zoning ordinance countywide versus just the three townships that it's applied to now. That paper also discusses our thoughts on the initial zone assignments in those nine townships that are not currently zoned, and it provides a synopsis of what brought us here, what the next steps are. Uh, so I won't repeat that information, but we'll address any questions you have about it. Our purpose tonight is to hear your comments and concerns about the subject of extending zoning countywide. Uh, after this, the commission will consider your comments and those that we may have received in writing to determine what changes we feel are necessary to our plans that are outlined in this document. I wanna remind everyone that our role is purely one of recommendations. Whatever we as a zoning commission determine will ultimately be provided to the county supervisors as our recommendations for their decision. Nothing will change unless they decide to change it. We wanna hear from everyone present tonight. The Zoning Commission will consider all comments presented. And if you wanna leave things in writing, that's welcome too. To ensure that everyone has a chance to speak in a timely manner, the Commission has discussed and decided on an initial five minute time limit per person. You cannot share or grant your time to extend someone else's speaking time. After everyone has had a chance to speak, you're free to come back to and speak a second time. We'll keep the meeting open as long as necessary to allow everyone to have their say in a timely manner. We'll have a timer running so you hear when you have 30 seconds left on your five minutes. The commission members may have questions on what you're saying, but we'll try to let you finish before we ask. Our questions and your response to those questions will not be part of your allotted time to speak. I should also note that you can certainly ask us questions as part of your comment time. We ask that each person that wants to speak do so at the podium so that the recording can pick up your comments. This little thing in the middle of the table here called the owl is where the, the microphone is at. Uh, begin by introducing yourself by first and last name and where you live. If you're speaking on behalf of a group or a business entity, please identify that as well. I would also ask that everyone respect the time and opinions of everyone else. We want this to be fair and equitable as possible, so please refrain from interrupting others or engaging in conversation while others are speaking. Also, audible reactions such as cheers or groans or applause are not appropriate. I would also expect that no one would verbally attack what someone else has said. You may disagree and say so, but please keep the comments professional and not personal. This can be an emotional topic for some people, but we want to discuss things objectively. Now open the meeting for public comment. Uh, please raise your hand if you desire to speak and proceed to the podium when called upon. For the people that are uh, online listening to the recording, we don't have the video going, um, just simply because we have the screen sharing, but there are all of three uh, people in the audience in addition to the four uh, zoning commissioners seated at the table. I have a question. 
Once, once this Speak ordinance. Begin, sorry, oh, start with your name and out. where you're from, please. Okay, my name is Alan Greasy, Worth County, on Witherwood Road near Silver Lake. My question is once, once this ordinance is passed, what, what will the process to modify it be? So the zoning ordinance is in place in the county today, but it, it, it applies only to the three townships of Heartland, Brookfield, and Danville. And the, um, the zoning ordinance, it really just describes what kind of development can occur in different kinds of places. And it has rules about setbacks from right-of-ways and things of that nature. And when people want to uh, put up a, a building, they apply for a building permit. Uh, and the building permit process is just to make certain that the building that's going in is in accordance with the, um, uh, the requirements of the, the, that are outlined in the zoning ordinance. If somebody has a piece of property that um, we'll say just by way of example, they have a piece of property that's owned agriculture uh, and they wanna put up a, um, uh, you know, a, a wedding venue as occurred a couple of years ago, then they apply for a zoning change when they apply for a zoning change to change that zone from agriculture to commercial in that particular case, um, then there's a public hearing that is held. Uh, neighbors for that property are notified that this property is desiring to change the zone. Uh, and then that public hearing, um, then that person presents the case why they think the land should change from this zoning designation to this zoning designation. designation. The zoning commission hears that, hears anybody that wants to speak about that potential change. And then once the zoning commission votes on their uh, decision, um, then that recommendation from the zoning commission goes to the board of supervisors. And then the board of supervisors would vote to change the zone from ag to commercial in that particular example. Okay, so, so A for instance would be, if you own a small amount of property and say that that you can see a wind turbine is going to be um, installed close enough where it would affect um, the distance from your property line where you could no longer build near your property line. Yeah, so the zoning ordinance doesn't address that at all. That kind of those kinds of things specific to the wind turbines are addressed in the draft ordinance that the zoning commission recommended to the board of supervisors. Um, the Board of Supervisors have not acted on that recommendation yet. Um, the board, they've been advised that if they, if the desire is to apply the wind ordinance countywide, that they should have zoning applied countywide instead of just three townships. Otherwise, if zoning stays at just three townships, um, then there's an argument that the a wind ordinance that applies countywide with zoning only in three townships is discriminatory against wind. And so the wind ordinance should either be limited to the three townships or zoning be applied countywide. So, so the, the question I ask is, um, you know, once, the, once it has passed, once it was approved. So, so, if, if, so you're saying if zoning was applied countywide. Yes. and. Um, say the, the setbacks were from a property line as opposed to a residence. So, so once it's passed, it's permanent. So once again, the details with regard to setbacks for wind turbines is all contained in that draft ordinance that the Zoning Commission recommended last July. That wind ordinance would have to get approved by the supervisors. It hasn't been taken up by them yet. They're holding off on that until they get a recommendation from us on countywide zone. Right, right. So, so I guess it's really not clear. Once it's passed, if it can be modified, that's that's. Kind of my what, what any ordinance? Once an ordinance is in place, ordinances can change. Thank you. Make it stop. Make it stop. <laughs> yeah, every ordinance can be modified going forward. Yeah, any any it ordinance. Be any larger process than passing the initial ordinance. 
Right. Well, it would be the same process. So to change the ordinance is the same kind of thing. It goes through a review and recommendation on the part of the zoning commission. The zoning commission has a public hearing on a change to the ordinance. We make our final decision as a recommendation and give that recommendation to the board of supervisors and then they decide whether or not they're going to change the ordinance. Okay, so it, it follows that same process. Anybody else like to speak, have comments? Okay, for those folks that are online again, um, once again, there are only uh, three uh, citizens in the room that are not part of the zoning commission. Uh, nobody else has a comment. I have an online I have, I'm on online, can I question? Yes. My name is Suzanne Quam. I'm from Worth County Union Township. My first question is, there currently is an updated 2009 partial county zoning. If you go to countywide zoning, is that same zoning going to be used countywide or would you be writing a new plan? So our initial, um, and I apologize if that's not stated in this um, document that we had provided ahead of time, um, but the, the, the thought is that that ordinance is in place, has been in place, as you noted, since 2009, there have been a few changes to it since then, and it has applied to those three townships. The expectation is that same ordinance um, would apply to the additional nine townships. Um, the only thing in that ordinance that shows that it is restricted to those three townships is a parenthetical statement under the title that names those townships. Once that parenthetical statement is removed from the title, um, then the ordinance would apply as written to those other nine townships. Again, at some point, um, there could be changes to the ordinance, and I expect that there, there may be some changes to the ordinance, um, but initially it would, um, it would apply as written. Okay, so my understanding from what you just shared is that, and please let me know if I did not understand this correctly, is that that 2009 updated zoning, you do plan to utilize that for the um, countywide zoning as the zoning plan. That's correct, as the zoning ordinance, that's correct. Okay, um, may I ask another question? Yes, you've got another two and a half minutes. Okay, uh, if the countywide zoning was implemented, what happens to those of the, us that have already built garages, storage buildings, and so forth? Do we have to remove the structures if they do not meet the new zoning ordinance? And what if we want to replace windows or have to re-roof one of our buildings or want to put up trees on our property or remove trees or... I'm not familiar with having to live in a zoned environment. So I, sure. those are some of the questions I have. Sure. So um, in the document on the second page, um, the second bullet uh, of that second page, uh, if you're yep. online, you should, you should be able to, to see um, yes. all facilities and activities, you know, businesses, what have you, anything that is currently occupied, that is currently in place, um, that may not meet uh, the details of the um, zoning ordinance for the particular zone that is assigned over that property, uh, would be continued um, as long as there are no material changes to it. it the, the, uh, the ordinance refers to those as non-conforming structures. So for instance, if you have a, um, a building um, that doesn't meet the setback requirement, you don't have to do anything at all to that building because it pre-existed the ordinance being applied to the property. So it can continue as it is. You just couldn't expand it in place. 
if you did a, a structural change to it, uh, then it would have to be brought into, uh, into conformance. Uh, but windows, um, trees, re-roofing, things of that nature have nothing to do uh, with, uh, with zone. None of that stuff falls into zoning. So the zoning basically has to do with building a structure or adding to an existing structure. It's not like uh, if you want to put sheetrock inside the building or you want to put a window in where there isn't right. a window or uh, put different type of roofing on, it's more of a, a building situation. That's correct, yes. In fact, if you, if you go online to the county website, the planning and zoning uh, webpage, the, the copy of the ordinance is there. Um, and if you, yeah. were to, if you were to look at that, um, there's I a- I did. I read all 112 pages. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so the, the, there, there's a, a table in each um, section that applies to each zone. The table is called bulk requirements, and that lays out the uh, essentially the requirements. So, as okay. I said, doing the kinds of things that you're describing, um, changing out drywall, adding windows, planting trees, cutting trees, none of that stuff falls into zone. But putting like a deck or new steps on the front of your house is that that's considered building? I don't think new steps on the front of the house. Um, a deck, I think the only way that a deck would apply is by if you extended the, the deck, um, you know, if it breached the setback requirements or something. Um, oh, like the 30 feet from the rear of the build of your property? Right. Yep. Less than that? Yes, yeah, yeah. So that, that would, but those kinds of things, you know, there, there's a whole, um, section that talks about variances as, as well. Uh, so if something like that were to come up that you wanted to put a deck on, uh, but by putting a deck on, it would exceed, you know, it would breach a setback requirement, then you could always pursue a variance for that as well. Okay, because I saw your current zoning districts, the class codes, and, it, and it, I wasn't real clear in reading that where, like, a non-agricultural acreage with a single family house and a couple outbuildings. Is that an R1? That would be an R1, yes. Okay. I think, yeah, anyone, I've gone over my time. Anyone else desires to speak? Mike Stevens, uh, East of Northwood. Um, my question is, if, if, you, if this was fast as you foresee it, what teeth are there going to be in the ordinance? Who will be enforcing it? How will the enforcement go about? So the enforcement, um, it, it, that's, a, that's a great question, um, frankly, because I think there's been a lot of things that have happened in the Heartland, Danville, and Brookfield townships that um, probably we're supposed to have building permits, you know, gone through the building permit process, which just makes certain that the building is compliant with the zoning ordinance. Um, that's the biggest part of the enforcement is just through that building permit process. Now, um, I, I can't envision that the county is gonna send anybody patrolling around the county, looking at, you know, who's, who's building things and checking to see, do they have a building permit? Um, and so the, again, the short answer is, um, you know, the, 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 the primary enforcement is through that building permit process. And neighbors. And neighbors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if, if a neighbor pipes up and says, hey, you know, the guy's running a, a tannery, you know, out of four big buildings that he's just built on his property, you know, they raise that, then yeah, somebody's probably going to look at that and say, well, oh, time out. You can't, can't do that without getting a permit or changing the zoning. Okay, I'm going to 
I'd like to ask another question if I could. Sure. Just to change it up a little bit from the perspective of, of egg land as a farmer, I understand that most egg build, buildings will not be um, involved in this too much. Will there be permits on that? No. So state law says that if it's ag zone and you're running farm, you're running a farming operation. So you're, you're producing agriculture, your house, your barn, your machine shed, your grain bin, all of those things that are in support of your production of agriculture are exempt from zoning requirements. So building permits are not required. Okay. If we want to build a new house to live in, just for a single family that lived on the property, would that be a, uh, come under the zoning law too? The, the, a separate single family dwelling and outside of the farm stand, outside of the, it would be, it would the be, farm's residence. My example would be the residence for the farm area. Okay. Yeah, so uh, separate from the, the farm. I just want to clarify those little things, so yep. that's all of that. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Would anybody else like to speak? Can I? Certainly. I'm sorry I'm late. I um, actually just got back from the Board of Adjustment in Saragordo County. So if you can just introduce yourself at the okay. podium. And we've set and a five minute We've limit. got a five minute, so you'll hear the timer go off when you got 30 seconds left. Okay. So my name is Julie Coons, uh, Union Township, um, Will Grafton. So first of all, I wanna thank you guys so much. I've been paying attention. And you know, I know that you guys had no clue you were gonna end up getting into this much time and everything. And it's, Greatly appreciated. And I guess I just want to say um, I'm learning a lot about planning and zoning, and I'm hoping that people are not fearful of it. Um, I'm, a little, I'm late getting here. I just raced in today because I was at the Board of Adjustment in Saragorda County. Um, I've met with in front of them twice. Um, uh, as my husband and I are going to be doing some building over in Clear Lake. And uh, zoning can be written in many ways. And Saragota, especially around the lake, which is, makes sense, it's pretty tough. But you know, I respect the process. It was a way for me to go in front of them. It was a way for any others to express their views for the Board of Adjustment, who is, you know, people of the community, um, who I highly respect to make a decision. So um, I, I think this is a good thing. And as I understand it, it, it may in fact um, help our um, ordinances be stronger um, regulations. And so I approve it um, very much. I don't understand it all quite yet. And I know there's been some questions. So um, I guess I would just remind people that <coughs> variances can be done, right? There'll be variances and a board of adjustment who's, who's regular, normal people that don't have horns on their heads that can listen to things and, and make good decisions. And um, I applaud you for everything. I think this is a good thing. Okay? Thanks, guys. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak? Anybody online? I have a, this is Suzanne Quam. If nobody else wants to speak, I got another question. Okay. May I ask another question? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Again, I'm not agriculture land. I just learned I'm probably a R1. But if you've already started, like for example, you're going to build a garage and you already got the cement poured but the weather got to the point that um, you couldn't start the construction part of the frame. How does that apply to something existing yet if this ordinance were to go in effect before you can get started on the framing part? So the, even at a, at a fast clip, um, this probably isn't going to get to the supervisors until early April. The supervisors then will need to decide if they're going to take this, take our recommendations 
um, if they're going to take them up. And if they do decide to take them up, then they have a process that they have to go through with public hearings and so on. So we're talking, you know, probably another three to four weeks at the fastest uh, for them. So now we're talking May time period. Anything that would be in progress, so if you've started it, then that would be considered in progress uh, and it would fall into that non-conformance uh, or grandfathered in this particular case, uh, grandfathered aspect and you'd be able to continue. You would not have to retroactively go back and get a building permit for something you've already started. Okay, so having the cement all laid uh, by a company is considered this, being started even though i mean it's the fact of not being able to get the supplies to even build it yet that's the that's the big problem right now yeah i think you know that's something that um you know honestly i think the the zoning commission would have to be very clear in our recommendation to the supervisors um so it, it's something that we would have to vote on as a commission, but just looking at the commissioners around the table, the, the bobbing of heads and so on, um, I think our inclination would be to say, if it's a project that has already begun, at whatever stage of completion it may be in, if it's already begun, um, then it just, it continues as it is because it, it got started um, before the rules changed. So, I mean, it, it, it's a classic, true vested interest situation. Okay, so it's it'd probably be a good idea then take a date time stamp picture of that to show that it's already in existence. It's not something that's gonna hurt. I okay. don't know that it would be necessary. But okay. The work right here is if you didn't start the project, you need to have a building permit. And as long as it meets the requirements where you're 50 foot away from the property right. line, et cetera, et cetera. We are trying to, zoning is not trying to stop progress. Um, we want you to build a garage so we can tax it. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, as, as we have the uh, assessor or deputy assessor in the room, uh, that's, 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 that's not the object of the zoning commission to stop progress. So our gain is your gain, kind of. Exactly, and, and it, if it isn't in progress, you know, you want to build a pole building two years from now. It's not a big deal to get a building permit. Matt, our zoning commissioner, comes out, takes a look. You meet the requirements, bam, you're done. Yeah, and they're pretty ex inexpensive building permits, too. Yeah. The, the fee schedule is online. I think I talked to somebody the other day, they I don't remember what it is that they built, but it, it was material, and I think it they said it cost them thirty dollars for their building permit. Yeah. Okay. Do we does it then have to be periodically inspected during the progress? If let's say oh. two years no. from now, do you no. send someone out to inspect it? No. No. Nope. No. In fact, the the county um, the county. Um, building code says that the county will follow the state and national codes. But it, there, there's no provision for inspections in the building code that I've seen. Okay. So like another example would be uh, we had our uh, front steps just completely crumbled and we had to finish the job with that jackhammer. But again, getting the replacement one, it's like, well, we don't have any in stock right now. So that's another thing in progress right now. We just got a bunch of rubble laying out there. Yeah, but that, once again, you're replacing something that already existed. So zoning wouldn't have any concern with that. Oh, okay. That would, that was another question I had. See, you could tell I've never lived in a zoned area, so I don't know how that all works. Okay, I, I'm done. Sorry for taking your time. Okay, thank you. Anybody else that would like to comment or ask a question? 
Anybody online? Mr. Uh, Mr. Gorbel, can, can I get a copy of what I'm looking at on my screen? Yes. I can't print it off my computer. So is there a way I can obtain these two pages? Oh, this, sure. This is good information. In fact, I've got about 110 pieces of, of pages of them. <laughs> Down the in the hallway right now. <laughs> I, I expected a few more people today, so I printed 120 okay. copies. <laughs> Will this be on your on on the um, Worth well, County website, it, possibly? I will send I will send a copy of this to Joel, uh, the uh, the county IT guy, and ask him to post this on the uh, on the the website. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Well, if there are no other comments or questions, we'll now close the public comment period. Is there any discussion amongst the commission members? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for attending. <clears throat> Can I end the Zoom, Jeff? Oh, never mind. We're already done.